Cambridge University is ranked the worst university in the UK in helping with disadvantaged students. So, Exeter, they still, do they still need students? Because I mean... Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and today, as you can see from the title, we are spilling the tea on my degree and my university. Oh, come on, right? I want to make a video on this because I do have something to say. I feel as a student, as someone who does the most for access, I feel like I kind of want to put my little two cents and my stamp on it. So, yeah, like, comment, let's spill some tea. And no, this isn't darling here, it's chicken chow mein. Mm -mm -mm. Now, small disclaimer this is my opinion, okay? I have a lot of opinions about this. I actually want to hear your comments. I actually want this to be a discussion, so please comment below what you think. If you're rude to me, you'll be blocked, and was that I don't like you, irrelevant. And I'm an influencer, so I worked on my platform, hence why I'm gonna be spitting the tea of what I wanna say. Do you like my Game of Friends t-shirt? Come on, Primer. Okay, so this was released by The Guardian. And they have it here, and they say Cambridge is the worst. They say that even though they advocate that they have higher percentage of state school students than they ever have, it's still crap because the whole point of how the garden is operationalizing or measuring working with access is actually targeting disprivileged groups, not just those who come from disprivileged postcode. They mean from low socioeconomic status. And I love the fact that they released this and I think, bam, shame, because can we do lie a lot? But anyways, let me tell you, this is my tea on this whole opinion, right? Because I thought I'd be arguments for and against. And I have some notes as well. Come on, news reporter. People from ends, like, when we look at Cambridge, we have this perception of it. We think it's very middle class and it's very elite and it's very prestige and we think it's too bougie for us. And how I know is because I thought this as well. And I feel like that's changed recently because of someone called Gibbs Mo. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Because a bunch of YouTubers have probably been out here trying to advocate diversity and showing you a real perspective of Cambridge. And I feel like it's changed. How do I know that? Because you guys have said that to me. But there are still some issues where it doesn't relate to us. So firstly, let's talk about the admissions, actually getting into Cambridge, right? In order to be considered as a Cambridge student, regardless of your background, you need to have a couple things. Be predicted high grades. You need to be predicted A star AA. Maybe AAA, maybe, but A star AA, that's the first thing. Then you need to have a good, a good personal statement before October 15th. They need to have, to do a test. The B lat, C lat, Ibs Mo lat, Bumba Clark lat, you gotta do all these lats that are involved, right? Then, if you get through round two, now, Cambridge take on 80% to round two. I don't know about Oxford, but they, they shit as well. You used to do interviews at the college you selected, and then you may have to do more essays or more admissions tests. Then the next part is when you have five academics that deal with each applicant getting in or not. That's what the website says. Yeah, I don't know if they mean for every college, but generally five academics deal with your acceptance. And then you either get in or you either don't. And within this application round, they consider your school, they consider your extenuating circumstances, and they consider they consider whether you're an overachiever or if you're resilient. An overachiever means that relative to your school, you're doing the most. And if you're resilient relative to your school, you're surviving. And that's why my social supervisor said to me, if you're resilient, because you obviously came from the slums of B6. And on top of that, they look for if you can fit into Cambridge. And what that means is, are you academic and will you grow? Will you have an upward trajectory in the sense that will you benefit from Cambridge because some people don't? And will you thrive in this environment? That is how you get in. Now, it will be very interesting if The Guardian released our statistics on how many disadvantaged students apply for every single one. For example, you're saying that we, we don't accept that many students, but how many disadvantaged students from ends, I'm talking ends, on welfare, on council, are printed to high grades? Are printed to A side A? What are the statistics for that? Are they disproportionate? Then tell me how many of them go to the second round of interviews. Then tell me, that is what they don't really reveal. And that's why I'm a bit like, mm. it's so easy to write an article, but in reality, are you even applying, right? That's just put out there in Cambridge's defense. But this is my little insight as someone who's on committees, as someone who does a lot of work, not with Cambridge, but for them in reality. I feel like Cambridge are targeting the wrong people. They keep saying, oh, we have an increase of students. And there's some stats, you know, let me bring out the stats. Okay, they said that we have, I think it's 62%, 63% are from lower postcodes and stuff like that, right? This is my issue. And this is how I feel as a student here. When I look around, I hardly see welfare kids, kids on child benefit, kids whose parents have to claim housing benefits, kids who are on free school meals are proper broke people. And I feel like it's so easy to say, oh, I go to a state school. 
you go to a grammar school, completely different boo, completely different. Okay, but then let's just say, we have another student says, oh, I'm from Peckham. You, you bought your house. Like, I know you're probably thinking, what does that mean? But you live in a nice house, a nice, where you can convert this, you can convert that. You don't live in the council city. You live in the council houses where like, some houses are dirty and why not? Because the council takes too long to fix it. You can do your house up and build another room and then build another house, but you don't live in, in the welfare. And so you might come from a postcode that is statistically bad in terms of socioeconomic status, but you, you ain't one of them. That's one thing. I feel like we target middle class students and a lot of middle class BME students. Again, I'm surprised at how many BME students are from ENDS. You know when I first met, Oh my God, you're Bangladeshi. What, what's what's one of it? You're telling you study economics. Uh, oh, sorry. I think you're possessed by a posh uh, middle class conservative. No, I'm not. I'm actually from the school of the middle class. Okay, okay. And it's not a bad thing. Like you can't cast. BME people for coming from posh backgrounds, like, what do you mean? Like, we all we all want to end up there one day, right? We all want to kind of be middle class, climbing up the ladder, maybe, maybe. Comment down if you disagree with me. So I kind of feel like you can't cuss them, but Cambridge are targeting the wrong students and they use them to say, we in the league, we on top, boo, we actually fine. In reality, you're not. They have this thing called SLOs, Student Liaison Officers and Access Officers. I've met some of them. They do my head in. Some of them don't even know what access is. Some of them are just doing the job for the job. I've met, well, I won't say from what college, right? But they were, we had to work together and they were so, they were so bad. Like even doing a workshop about personal statements, they were just so crap. They were just, they were so bad. Where's your passion, man? Where did all this, how, how did you get this job? It's such an important role for me. And how did you get here? So the staff in Cambridge are a bit booky. Some are amazing, some are a bit, they don't really know what they're doing. And I feel like when they come to current undergrads like me, I'm sorry, but I have all these essays you're saying me. I have so much work to do, and then I get in trouble when I miss them. How can you expect me to help in this way when, in another way, I'm being criticised? And so it's a whole system of, like, they don't know who to target, and the people they get aren't really that good. Some are great, some are amazing, but the majority are bad, hence why you're the worst on the league table for access. And although, to an extent, I do think that it is still progress because we are still having an increase of state school, an increase of BME people, regardless of their background. It is progress and you never know in the future these individuals can help spread awareness and create paths for other people. Maybe that's me being too optimistic. But I feel like that could happen and maybe that's a thing that happens in the future. But then I feel like, are we just going to keep getting grammar school and post students every single day? Because that's all I'm seeing. And this is a way for me, I feel like Cambridge to an extent will never change because of their tradition, because of their ways. Should we tell Cambridge to then lower their entry requirements? So we then tell them to lower their, some people say standards for disadvantaged students. You need to get A star AA to get in. Fact, you need to pass the test, facts. Should we now say to lower the standard? Or should we get Cambridge to go out to different schools and help these people from these backgrounds understand more about it and you're probably thinking well it's not Cambridge's job and to be fair it's not just Cambridge it's also the students and it's also the family and it's also the school and the government but if Cambridge if you're going to call yourself the number one education institution on the league tables you might as well live up to that expectation but anyway here are some other reasons why I feel like it's hard for us because let's go back to the admissions are people from welfare or are people who are disadvantaged gonna have a star AA as their predicted grades are they even gonna have teachers that are gonna say you can go to Cambridge let me write you a good reference. Let me predict you that A star. Statistics say that a lot of teachers would recommend that people don't go to Oxford, even if they have it themselves. My point is, is that from the get-go, from the first round of admissions, we ain't motivated to go. We ain't encouraged to go. So why are we even, so how are we even supposed to apply to then help Cambridge? Then let's go to the interviews, right? How nervous must they be or we be when we go into i haven't had a proper interview where we talk about work like this the only interview i have is when you call me to question me about my behavior to question me about why my bunk in school to question me about my absence my lateness my low predicted grades that's what i have interviews about so now you want me to have some academic one it's going to be intimidating it's going to be pressure and then you want to do tests as well some schools aren't don't have the funding to do the bmat 
And I'll say B6, I'll shout you out. You guys said to me you don't have the funding to do the BMAT. Then let's go to the last round where you have five academics that consider you applying. How many of them are going to come from these backgrounds where they can relate? How many of them are going to be women? How many of them are going to be disabled? How many of them are going to be BME? So how can they empathise or relate to you? And let's just say they can, because at the end of the day, we are all human beings and we do have empathy to an extent, which I totally believe in. Are they going to truly get it in the same way that someone from your background who rose to the top would get it as well? And I don't know. Again, comment down below. Tell me what you think. Maybe you think I'm being too biased or too left wing, but I generally just feel like the admissions process does not favour disadvantaged students because we're not encouraged from the get-go to apply here then when we do try to break through we have all these rounds and all these things that we need to pass through to get in and then if we do only a small minority a very small minority within a minority would get in and then can we go and be like we will teach you we'll lead you the way when we have 27 essays due in one term it's a big 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 struggle and sometimes i feel like these statistics constantly say Cambridge is like the bad guy and they are willingly going to be like, we don't want you, we don't want you, we don't want you. But if it's an admission system that is embedded in your tradition, can you do anything about it? Maybe they can change it, maybe not. I don't know, that's just my opinion. But this is the biggest thing for me. Who says Cambridge even deserves these students? Listen, I'm struggling here. I feel like when they say we can deal with anything, no, you can't. You actually can't deal with a lot of things because you haven't had students like us. Do you know how much stress I'm going through just being here because I'm poor? Some colleges will give you money. Some colleges will give you a loan and say, pay us back. Yes, I'm indirecting you, Wolfson. So my point is, once we're even here, is it even that good? Do they even deserve the students? Are they even going to help them? And I feel like this is what it comes down to. Cambridge Bank last in university. Why don't you praise the universities that came first or second? And what I say is, Cambridge does not meet everyone's needs and that is fine. This is saying that Cambridge doesn't meet everyone's needs and that's bad. What do you think? I think that Cambridge has a horrible, horrible, intense eight weeks worth of term. Some people thrive of it, some people do like it, I like it to an extent, but I can definitely see why we have so many students that drop out or intermit. And I feel like Cambridge isn't for everyone because it's intense and the real world, the real academic life is not like this. So why even come here and apply here if you know it's just gonna damage you and mentally scar you? This place has really high mental illnesses, like it's, it's crazy. This is very structural in arguing that because Cambridge doesn't do a lot, you're not gonna wanna come here. Frankly B, some people don't wanna come in because they don't wanna deal with your stress, Cambridge. So although I understand that Cambridge can do a lot more and I hope, inshallah, they do a lot more to change the way in which they do approach students from disadvantaged backgrounds the students have to believe in themselves the parents have to believe themselves the school has to encourage them society has to structure them there's a massive massive like structural individual sexual no, there's a big relationship i'm tired okay i've been studying all day there's a big 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 system that i feel like it's just really really hard sometimes but let me know what you think like me i never had no one in Oxbridge. I didn't know anyone here. I didn't have an uncle or an older brother or a friend who came to Oxbridge who could help me and show me how this is like. That's what I'm hoping I can do that for you. And I feel like as students, that is what we should do. We don't have to physically every day help a student out and try to fight for access. But I feel like just raising awareness of how the process works really, 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 really helps. And that's what I feel like. Hopefully you guys get it from these videos and all the other YouTubers. And I want Cambridge to step up their game a bit. I feel like there's more that they could show in terms of access into Cambridge. But that's just my opinion. Please comment down below what you think. I'm so, this is the first I really wanna hear your opinion. So please comment your paragraphs down below. I'll have a read of them. And just guys, like it's just Cambridge. You know what I mean? Like it's not the best university in the world. It is the best in the country, sorry Oxford. But I feel like, I'm not sending my child here, but I feel like what carries Cambridge to be so great is the name and the prestigiousness value of it and how elitist it is and how, oh my God, you went to Cambridge. And although it is great, and for students who are here, like you fought through the system and you survived and you got it here and that's why I respect you so much. It's for like, at the end of the day, it's just a uni and like, you can learn so much from not being here. It's not that deep. Thank you so much, guys. Please subscribe, please comment, please like, please be a hoe. Love you. Don't be a hoe. Don't be a hoe.